In the picturesque town of Sodor, where the engines puffed and chugged along the railway tracks, a sense of excitement filled the air. The annual Sodor Railway Exhibition was fast approaching, and everyone was abuzz with preparations. Thomas, the cheerful blue engine, was particularly eager for the exhibition. He had heard rumors of a legendary lost locomotive, and he hoped to find clues during the event. The lost locomotive was said to possess a magical golden whistle that could create the most beautiful melodies, and Thomas was determined to uncover its mystery. As the day of the exhibition arrived, the engines gathered at the bustling station. The air was filled with the scent of fresh flowers, and the platform was adorned with colorful banners and bunting. Sir Topham Hatt, the fat controller, addressed the engines. Ladies and gentlemen, engines and passengers, welcome to the Sodor Railway Exhibition, he announced. Today, we celebrate the rich history of our railway. Thomas couldn't wait to start his search for the lost locomotive. He puffed away from the main platform and headed towards a quiet, overgrown track that had been unused for years. He was determined to follow any lead, even if it meant venturing into the unknown. As Thomas explored the forgotten track, he noticed an old, rusted sign with faded letters that read, Golden Valley Line. This had to be the place. His excitement grew as he ventured deeper into the valley. Amidst the dense trees and overgrown bushes, Thomas heard faint echoes of a beautiful melody. The sound seemed to be coming from a hidden cave up ahead. He cautiously steamed closer, and there in the heart of the cave he saw a magnificent golden locomotive. The lost locomotive, named Harmony, was a breathtaking sight. Her gleaming golden paint sparkled in the soft golden light filtering through the cave's entrance. On her smokestack rested the legendary golden whistle. Harmony greeted Thomas with a warm smile. I've been waiting for someone to find me, Thomas. You must be the one. Thomas was filled with awe and curiosity. Harmony, may I please borrow your golden whistle for the Sodor Railway Exhibition? Your music would bring joy to everyone. Harmony agreed, but she had a condition. You may borrow my golden whistle, Thomas, but only if you promise to share the music from your heart. Music is meant to be shared with love and sincerity. Thomas was overjoyed and made the promise wholeheartedly. He gently removed the golden whistle from Harmony's smokestack and attached it to his own. With a toot of his whistle, he played the most beautiful melody anyone in Sodor had ever heard. At the Sodor Railway Exhibition, the visitors and engines gathered around in amazement as Thomas shared the magical music of the golden whistle. The melody touched their hearts, filling the air with harmony and joy. As the exhibition came to an end, Thomas returned the golden whistle to Harmony, thanking her for her generosity. Harmony smiled and whispered, Remember, Thomas, music from the heart is the most magical of all. And so, Thomas learned that the most extraordinary treasures could be found in the most unexpected places, and the true magic of music lay not in the instrument but in the sincerity with which it was played. Once upon a time in the lively town of Adventure Bay, a group of energetic and resourceful puppies known as the Paw Patrol was always ready to help those in need. Led by Ryder, a clever and kind young boy, the Paw Patrol was known far and wide for their bravery and determination. One sunny morning, the Paw Patrol received an urgent call. A family of ducks was trapped on a fast-flowing river, and they needed help. Ryder quickly gathered his team. Chase, the police pup, Marshall, the firefighting pup, Skye, the high-flying pup, Rubble, the construction pup, Rocky, the recycling pup, and Zuma, the water rescue pup. They jumped into their rescue vehicles and headed out to save the day. Arriving at the river, the Paw Patrol assessed the situation. The current was strong, and the baby ducks were struggling to stay together. Sky soared above in her helicopter, creating a strong wind to slow down the current. Rocky used his recycling skills to build a makeshift bridge, while Zuma navigated the water in his boat. Chase carefully herded the ducklings onto the bridge, while Marshall stood by with his water hose in case of any emergencies. With teamwork, determination, and their unique skills, the Paw Patrol successfully guided the ducks to safety. The grateful duck family quacked in joy, and their mother flapped her wings in appreciation. Ryder and the Paw Patrol smiled, knowing that their efforts had made a difference. The town of Adventure Bay cheered and clapped as they witnessed the heroic rescue. As the sun set on Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol returned to their lookout tower, proud of their successful mission. Ryder reminded his team that no matter the challenge, 
they could always rely on each other and their friendship to save the day. And so, the Paw Patrol continued to be the town's heroes, ready to face any problem and help anyone in need. Their bravery, teamwork, and unwavering dedication proved that with determination and the spirit of friendship, anything was possible. In the bustling town of Adventure Bay, there was a special group of pups known as the Paw Patrol. These six brave pups, along with their leader Ryder, were always ready to leap into action and save the day. One sunny morning, Adventure Bay was buzzing with excitement as Mayor Goodway prepared for the annual Adventure Day celebration. There would be games, music, and delicious treats for everyone to enjoy. But as Mayor Goodway was setting up the celebration, she noticed something was missing, the grand prize trophy. Frantic and worried, Mayor Goodway called Ryder and the Paw Patrol for help. Ryder quickly gathered the pups and explained the situation. Chase, the police pup, sprang into action, using his keen tracking skills to search for clues. Sky, the fearless pilot, soared above Adventure Bay, scanning the area for any signs of the missing trophy. Meanwhile, Marshall, the firefighting Dalmatian, and Rubble, the construction-loving bulldog, cleared the streets to ensure everyone's safety. Zuma, the water rescue pup, patrolled the waterfront just in case. As the Paw Patrol followed the clues, they soon discovered that Chicoletta, Mayor Goodway's pet chicken, had taken the trophy to her secret nest. Chicoletta had mistaken it for a shiny egg. With gentle care and a soft touch, Ryder and the pups retrieved the trophy from Chicoletta's nest. Mayor Goodway was relieved and grateful for their help. Adventure Day could now go on as planned. The celebration was a huge success, with games, music, and treats for everyone. The Paw Patrol pups received a special thank you from the townspeople for their bravery and quick thinking. As the sun set over Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol pups returned to their lookout tower, ready for their next adventure. They knew that no matter the challenge, they could always count on each other to save the day and keep Adventure Bay safe. Once upon a time in the bustling town of Adventure Bay, there were six courageous puppies and a tech-savvy boy who formed a heroic team known as the Paw Patrol. Ryder, the young leader, and his pup pals, Chase, Marshall, Skye, Rubble, Rocky, and Zuma, were always ready for any rescue mission that came their way. One sunny morning, the Adventure Bay community gathered for the grand opening of a new amusement park. The park, named Adventureland, was a place of fun and excitement. Everyone was thrilled, except for Mayor Humdinger and his mischievous kittens, who had been planning their own not-so-fun event. As the park's first ride, the Thrillo Coaster, rocketed into action, something went terribly wrong. Mayor Humdinger's kittens had tampered with the controls, and the coaster was stuck at the highest point, with people screaming for help. In a flash, Ryder received an emergency call on his pup pad. Without wasting a second, he summoned the Paw Patrol to the lookout. The team quickly gathered, and Chase, Marshall, Sky, Rubble, Rocky, and Zuma raced to the rescue vehicles. With teamwork and determination, the Paw Patrol reached Adventureland. Chase's police skills helped keep the crowd safe, while Marshall's firefighting expertise was put to use calming frightened riders. Sky and her helicopter were invaluable in assessing the situation from above and Rubble's construction skills came in handy to devise a rescue plan. As the pups worked together, they managed to safely lower the roller coaster back to the ground, earning cheers and gratitude from the relieved visitors. Mayor Humdinger, who had been scheming to take over Adventure Bay, saw how the Paw Patrol's teamwork and heroism had saved the day. He realized that his kitten's mischievous ways were no match for the incredible bond of friendship shared by the pups. In the end, Adventure Bay celebrated not only the opening of Adventureland, but also the heroic efforts of the Paw Patrol. Ryder and his faithful team proved once again that no challenge was too big, and no job was too small when they worked together. As the sun set on Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol returned to their lookout, knowing that they were always ready to protect their community and make it a safe and fun place for all. And so, the story of Adventure Bay continued with the Paw Patrol always on the lookout, ensuring that their town remained a place of excitement, friendship. Once upon a time in the colorful town of Bikini Bottom lived a cheerful and optimistic sea sponge named SpongeBob SquarePants. He worked as a fry cook at the Krusty Krab, 
flipping Krabby Patties with a passion that matched his bright personality. One sunny morning, SpongeBob woke up with an idea that he couldn't contain. He decided to organize the first-ever Bikini Bottom Friendship Festival. He wanted to bring all the underwater creatures together to celebrate their unique qualities and create new friendships. With his best friend Patrick Starr by his side, SpongeBob set out to plan the festival. They gathered decorations, organized games, and even convinced Squidward Tentacles to play his clarinet for the event. Sandy Cheeks, the brilliant squirrel scientist, helped set up the stage for the grand performance. As the day of the festival arrived, the town buzzed with excitement. Everyone wore their brightest smiles and unique outfits, reflecting their individuality. There were jellyfish catching contests, bubble blowing competitions, and even a synchronized swimming display by the Squidward led jelly explosions. At sunset, the festival reached its climax with a talent show. Each creature showcased their skills from Plankton's stand up comedy routine to Mrs. Puff's bubble blowing opera. The audience cheered and laughed celebrating the diversity that made Bikini Bottom a truly special place. As the festival came to an end, SpongeBob realized that his idea had not only brought the town together, but also strengthened their bonds. New friendships were formed, and old grudges were forgotten. The town's sea creatures were more connected than ever before. With the success of the Friendship Festival, SpongeBob and his friends learned that embracing differences and celebrating individuality could lead to a happier and more united community. And so, as the stars twinkled in the bikini-bottom sky, the underwater town drifted off to sleep, knowing that their friendships were stronger than ever. In the charming town of Peppa Town lived a lovable little pig named Peppa. Peppa was known for her boundless curiosity and infectious laughter. She had a group of wonderful friends, including Susie Sheep, Danny Dog, and Emily Elephant. One sunny morning, Peppa and her friends decided to have a picnic at the beautiful Peppa Town Park. They packed their favorite sandwiches, fruits, and of course, lots of muddy puddle snacks. Peppa's little brother George was excited too, as he loved jumping in muddy puddles. As they reached the park, they spread out their picnic blanket and started enjoying their delicious treats. Suddenly, they heard a faint chirping sound. They followed the sound and discovered a lost baby bird perched on a tree branch. The bird looked sad and scared. Peppa and her friends knew they had to help the little bird. They tried to figure out how to get it back to its nest, but it was too high up. Peppa had an idea. She used her toy telescope to spot the nest hidden high in the tree. It was nestled among the leaves. The friends worked together to build a makeshift ladder using sticks and leaves. With a bit of teamwork, they managed to carefully place the ladder against the tree. Peppa, being the tallest, climbed up and gently placed the baby bird back in its nest. The baby bird's mother chirped joyfully, relieved to have her baby back. As a token of gratitude, the baby bird's mother sang a beautiful melody, filling the air with music. Peppa and her friends smiled, knowing they had made a little feathered family happy. After their adventure, Peppa and her friends returned to their picnic spot. They laughed and played, jumping in muddy puddles and sharing stories of their day. As the sun began to set, they packed up their picnic and headed home, cherishing the memories they had made. And so, in Peppa Town, the day ended with smiles, laughter, and a heartwarming story of friendship and helping others in need. Once upon a time in a bustling city, there lived a group of mischievous little creatures known as the Minions. These yellow, banana-loving creatures were always up to some playful antics that brought laughter to anyone who crossed their path. One sunny morning, three Minions named Kevin, Stuart, and Bob decided to embark on an adventure. They had heard rumors of a legendary banana paradise hidden deep in the jungle, and they were determined to find it. Armed with their boundless energy and curiosity, the trio set off on their journey. Their adventure was filled with comical mishaps and hilarious encounters. From accidentally turning a tree into a giant slingshot to mistaking a swarm of butterflies for rainbow-colored bananas, the minions found themselves in one amusing situation after another. As they ventured deeper into the jungle, the minions stumbled upon a hidden temple. Intrigued, they entered and discovered an ancient prophecy that spoke of a banana paradise, guarded by challenges only the bravest could overcome. Excited by the prospect of a grand adventure, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob eagerly accepted the challenge. They faced a series of trials that tested their teamwork, creativity, and determination. From solving riddles to outwitting mischievous jungle creatures, the minions proved that their boundless enthusiasm and unique abilities were their greatest strengths. After overcoming each trial, 
the minions finally reached the heart of the jungle. There, they discovered a breathtaking paradise filled with banana trees as far as the eye could see. Their excitement was palpable, and they joyfully celebrated their success. But their adventure taught them a valuable lesson. As they feasted on bananas and shared stories under the starlit sky, Kevin, Stuart, and Bob realized that the true treasure wasn't just the bananas, but the friendship they had forged along the way. Their bond had grown stronger through every challenge and laughter-filled moment. As they made their way back to the city, the minions carried the memory of their adventure in their hearts. Their mischievous antics continued, but now they shared a deeper connection and understanding of the power of friendship. And so, the minions continued to bring joy and laughter to the world, all while cherishing the memories of their wild and unforgettable adventure to the banana paradise. With every banana they enjoyed and every prank they pulled, they reminded everyone that life's greatest treasures are the moments spent with those who make us laugh and smile. In a world filled with villainous plans and mischief, there existed a unique group of creatures known as the Minions. These small yellow beings had a penchant for chaos, adventure, and most of all, bananas. One sunny day, three Minions named Kevin, Stuart, and Bob set out on a mission to find their new villainous master. They traveled across oceans and continents, their journey taking them to the bustling city of New York. Determined to serve the most despicable villain they could find, they stumbled upon a villain con convention. At the convention, they encountered the charismatic yet slightly eccentric Scarlet Overkill, the world's first female supervillain. With her impressive gadgets and elaborate plans, Scarlet promised to take them under her wing if they successfully stole the Queen of England's crown. The minions eagerly embraced the challenge and embarked on a wild adventure across London. Their escapades led to hilarious mishaps, from accidentally crashing a royal party to driving a bulldozer through the streets of the city. Despite the chaos, their loyalty and determination won over Scarlet. However, as they finally obtained the crown and presented it to Scarlet, they realized her true intentions were far from despicable. She planned to use the crown's powers to become the world's ruler and leave the minions behind. The trio's loyalty to each other outweighed their desire to serve a villain, and they decided to stop Scarlet's plans. In a spectacular showdown inside the Tower of London, the minions used their unique skills to thwart Scarlet's plans. Their teamwork and resilience shone through as they worked together to save the day. In the end, Scarlet was defeated, and the minions were celebrated as heroes. Returning to their carefree lives, the minions continued to pursue bananas and adventures, embracing the chaos and laughter that came with their misadventures. With their unique charm and unwavering loyalty to each other, they reminded everyone that sometimes, even in a world of villainy, a little bit of silliness and friendship could make all the difference. Once upon a time in the lively town of Adventure Bay, a group of energetic and resourceful puppies known as the Paw Patrol was always ready to help those in need. Led by Ryder, a clever and kind young boy, the Paw Patrol was known far and wide for their bravery and determination. One sunny morning, the Paw Patrol received an urgent call. A family of ducks was trapped on a fast-flowing river, and they needed help. Ryder quickly gathered his team. Chase, the police pup, Marshall, the firefighting pup, Skye, the high-flying pup, Rubble, the construction pup, Rocky, the recycling pup, and Zuma, the water rescue pup. They jumped into their rescue vehicles and headed out to save the day. Arriving at the river, the Paw Patrol assessed the situation. The current was strong and the baby ducks were struggling to stay together. Skye soared above in her helicopter, creating a strong wind to slow down the current. Rocky used his recycling skills to build a makeshift bridge, while Zuma navigated the water in his boat. Chase carefully herded the ducklings onto the bridge, while Marshall stood by with his water hose in case of any emergencies. With teamwork, determination, and their unique skills, the Paw Patrol successfully guided the ducks to safety. The grateful duck family quacked in joy, and their mother flapped her wings in appreciation. Ryder and the Paw Patrol smiled, knowing that their efforts had made a difference. The town of Adventure Bay cheered and clapped as they witnessed the heroic rescue. As the sun set on Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol returned to their lookout tower, proud of their successful mission. Ryder reminded his team that no matter the challenge, they could always rely on each other and their friendship to save the day. And so, the Paw Patrol continued to be the town's heroes, ready to face any problem and help anyone in need. 
Their bravery, teamwork, and unwavering dedication proved that with determination and the spirit of friendship, anything was possible. Once upon a time in the magical land of Neverland lived a mischievous and adventurous boy named Peter Pan. He could fly, thanks to his belief in happy thoughts and fairy dust. Along with his loyal fairy companion, Tinker Bell, Peter lived a carefree life, never growing up. One night, while visiting the real world, Peter met Wendy, a kind-hearted girl who loved stories of adventure and fairy tales. Impressed by Peter's ability to fly, Wendy eagerly agreed to join him in Neverland along with her two younger brothers, John and Michael. In Neverland, they encountered a host of fantastical creatures, from the mischievous Lost Boys to the fearsome Captain Hook and his crew of pirates. Peter, Wendy, and the Lost Boys engaged in epic battles with Hook, always managing to outwit him with their cleverness and teamwork. As their adventures continued, Peter and Wendy's friendship blossomed into something deeper. Wendy became a motherly figure to the Lost Boys, nurturing them with her kindness and stories of home. And even though the dangers of Neverland were real, Peter's unfailing spirit and belief in magic helped them overcome every obstacle. One fateful day, Wendy realized that she missed her family and longed to return home. The time had come for her, John, and Michael to say goodbye to Neverland and to Peter. With a heavy heart, Wendy bid farewell to her newfound friends, promising to remember them always. Years later, as Wendy grew up and had children of her own, she continued to share the tales of her adventures in Neverland. And though Peter Pan remained forever young, he treasured the memories of his time with Wendy and her brothers, flying over London on starlit nights, watching over children and guiding them to the land of dreams. And so, the story of Peter Pan and Wendy's Neverland adventure became a timeless tale of friendship, bravery, and the magic of never growing up. Once upon a time in the whimsical land of Cartoontopia lived a mischievous rabbit named Benny and a clever turtle named Terry. Benny loved pranks and jokes, while Terry had a knack for solving puzzles and riddles. One sunny morning, a mysterious treasure map appeared in Cartoontopia, promising untold riches hidden deep in the enchanted forest. Benny and Terry, intrigued by the challenge, decided to team up for the adventure. Their journey took them through Candy Canyon, where they encountered a talking candy river that only flowed when someone told a funny joke. Benny's antics came in handy as he told one joke after another, making the river laugh and allowing them to cross. Next, they ventured into the Puzzle Peaks, a mountain range filled with tricky puzzles. Terry's analytical mind shone as he solved each puzzle with ease, leading them closer to the treasure's location. As they delved deeper into the enchanted forest, they faced a final challenge, a guardian dragon that guarded the treasure. Benny's quick thinking and Terry's knowledge of dragon myths helped them calm the dragon by telling it a heartwarming story. At last, they discovered the treasure. Not gold or jewels, but a chest filled with laughter, friendship, and the joy of adventure. They realized that the true treasure was the journey itself and the memories they had created together. Returning to Cartoontopia, Benny and Terry shared their story with their friends, inspiring everyone to embrace their unique talents and work together to overcome challenges. And so, the land of Cartoontopia became a place where laughter and cooperation thrived, all thanks to the legendary adventure of Benny the Rabbit and Terry the Turtle. In a cozy little village, there lived a young girl named Lily. Lily was excited because her very first loose tooth had appeared. She wiggled it with her tongue, eagerly anticipating the day it would come out. One evening, as Lily was getting ready for bed, she felt her tooth wobble more than ever. With a tug and a twist, it finally popped out. Lily carefully placed it under her pillow, just like her parents had told her to do. As Lily drifted off to sleep, a sprinkle of stardust filled the room. With a soft fluttering of wings, a small and shimmering creature appeared. The Tooth Fairy. She had a radiant smile and carried a tiny bag made of sparkling leaves. The Tooth Fairy gently retrieved the tooth from under Lily's pillow and left a shiny silver coin in its place. She whispered words of magic and dreams, ensuring that Lily would have the sweetest of dreams that night. Lily woke up the next morning with a huge smile on her face. She eagerly reached under her pillow and found the shiny silver coin. She knew that the Tooth Fairy had visited her in the night. Over the years, as Lily lost more teeth, the Tooth Fairy continued to visit. 
Each time, she left behind a special gift in exchange for Lily's tooth. Lily started a collection of shiny coins and trinkets, each one a reminder of her magical encounters with the Tooth Fairy. As Lily grew older, she never forgot the kindness of the Tooth Fairy and the enchantment she brought into her life. And even though she no longer had baby teeth to leave under her pillow, she would sometimes spot a glimmering speck of stardust, knowing that the Tooth Fairy was always watching over her. And so, the village of Lily's childhood was filled with the joy and wonder of children who eagerly awaited their own visits from the magical Tooth Fairy, just like Lily had experienced. In the bustling town of Adventure Bay, there was a special group of pups known as the Paw Patrol. These six brave pups, along with their leader Ryder, were always ready to leap into action and save the day. One sunny morning, Adventure Bay was buzzing with excitement as Mayor Goodway prepared for the annual Adventure Day celebration. There would be games, music, and delicious treats for everyone to enjoy. But as Mayor Goodway was setting up the celebration, she noticed something was missing, the grand prize trophy. Frantic and worried, Mayor Goodway called Ryder and the Paw Patrol for help. Ryder quickly gathered the pups and explained the situation. Chase, the police pup, sprang into action, using his keen tracking skills to search for clues. Sky, the fearless pilot, soared above Adventure Bay, scanning the area for any signs of the missing trophy. Meanwhile, Marshall, the firefighting Dalmatian, and Rubble, the construction-loving bulldog, cleared the streets to ensure everyone's safety. Zuma, the water rescue pup, patrolled the waterfront just in case. As the Paw Patrol followed the clues, they soon discovered that Chicoletta, Mayor Goodway's pet chicken, had taken the trophy to her secret nest. Chicoletta had mistaken it for a shiny egg. With gentle care and a soft touch, Ryder and the pups retrieved the trophy from Chicoletta's nest. Mayor Goodway was relieved and grateful for their help. Adventure Day could now go on as planned. The celebration was a huge success, with games, music, and treats for everyone. The Paw Patrol pups received a special thank you from the townspeople for their bravery and quick thinking. As the sun set over Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol pups returned to their lookout tower, ready for their next adventure. They knew that no matter the challenge, they could always count on each other to save the day and keep Adventure Bay safe. In the colorful town of Springfield, there lived two adventurous siblings, Bart and Lisa Simpson. One sunny Saturday morning, they decided to embark on a thrilling journey through their town. Their first stop was the Quick E-Mart, where they met their friend Millhouse. The three of them indulged in oversized squishies and giant pink donuts while sharing laughter and stories. Next, they visited Springfield Park, where they discovered a hidden treasure map buried under a big old oak tree. With excitement in their eyes, they followed the map's twists and turns, encountering funny characters like Ned Flanders and Chief Wiggum along the way. Their adventure led them to the Springfield Museum, where they marveled at art, history, and dinosaur exhibits. They even learned a thing or two about the town's past. As the day turned to evening, they reached their final destination, Moe's Tavern. Of course, they didn't go inside, but stood outside and watched Homer Simpson, their dad, enjoying a duff beer while chatting with his friends. With tired but happy hearts, Bart, Lisa, and Milhouse returned home, knowing that even in their quirky town, there were endless adventures waiting to be explored. They fell asleep with dreams of their next exciting day in Springfield. The Simpsons may have its more mature moments, but in this kid-friendly adventure, Bart and Lisa showed that even in a wacky town like Springfield, siblings can find fun and excitement while learning valuable lessons along the way. Once upon a time, in a bustling town, there lived a cheerful blue engine named Thomas. He was the heart of the Sodor Railway, always bustling around with his iconic number one painted on his side. Thomas was filled with a sense of adventure and a desire to help others. One sunny morning, the fat controller approached Thomas with an important task. He needed Thomas to deliver a special cargo of supplies to a faraway village. The villagers were in need, and Thomas happily accepted the responsibility. As Thomas chugged along the tracks, he passed by picturesque landscapes and friendly faces. He waved to his friends, Annie and Clarabelle, the passenger cars who were always ready for a journey. The journey was going smoothly until Thomas encountered a fallen tree blocking the tracks. Determined to complete his mission, Thomas came up with a clever idea. He gently pushed and pulled the fallen tree until it was safely moved away from the tracks. With a triumphant toot of his whistle, Thomas continued on his way 
grateful for his problem-solving skills. When Thomas arrived at the village, the villagers were overjoyed to receive the supplies. They thanked Thomas for his help and admired his can-do attitude. Thomas beamed with pride, knowing that he had made a difference in their lives. On his way back to the Sodor Railway, Thomas encountered a little squirrel stranded on a branch. The squirrel looked scared and unsure of how to get down. Thomas knew he had to help. With careful maneuvering and a gentle nudge, Thomas helped the squirrel safely reach the ground. As Thomas returned to the Sodor Railway, he felt a deep sense of contentment. He realized that being a helpful and kind engine brought him immense joy. The Fat Controller praised Thomas for his efforts and shared how proud he was of him. From that day on, Thomas continued to be a symbol of hard work, kindness, and determination on the Sodor Railway. His friends admired his spirit, and he became an inspiration to engines young and old. And as the sun set on the railway, Thomas knew that each new day would bring new adventures and opportunities to spread his goodwill throughout the land. In the colorful world of Sodor, there's a little blue steam engine named Thomas. He's part of a group of friendly and hardworking trains, each with their own unique personalities. Thomas is full of curiosity and enthusiasm, always eager to help his friends and go on exciting adventures. One day, the Fat Controller, also known as Sir Topham Hat, assigns Thomas a special task. He needs to deliver a load of important goods to a distant part of the island. Thomas is excited and sets off on his journey, chugging along the tracks, passing through lush fields and picturesque villages. Along the way, Thomas encounters his fellow trains, including his best friend Percy, the wise Edward, the strong Henry, and the cheeky James. They all work together to keep the railway running smoothly and make sure everyone is safe. However, on his way back from his delivery, Thomas faces unexpected challenges. A fallen tree blocks the tracks, and he needs help from his friends to clear the way. Together, they manage to overcome the obstacle and continue their journey. As the sun sets, Thomas finally returns to the Sodor train station, tired but satisfied with his day's work. The Fat Controller congratulates Thomas for his dedication and teamwork. Thomas smiles proudly, knowing that he has done his part to keep Sodor's railway system running smoothly. Thomas the Tank Engine's stories teach valuable lessons about friendship, teamwork, responsibility, and problem-solving, all while captivating young audiences with the charming world of trains and adventures on the rails. In the charming world of Sodor, there was a little blue train named Thomas. He lived on the island with many other trains, but Thomas was the most curious of them all. He loved to explore and make new friends. One sunny morning, Thomas was at the Sodor Steamworks getting some repairs when he overheard a conversation between the older trains. They spoke of a legendary engine named Lady, said to possess magical powers that brought luck to anyone who befriended her. Determined to meet Lady and experience her magic, Thomas set off on an adventure across the island. Along the way, he encountered his friends Percy, James, and Emily, who decided to join him on this exciting quest. Their journey was filled with challenges and surprises. They passed through misty valleys, climbed steep hills, and even crossed rickety bridges. But their determination and teamwork helped them overcome every obstacle. As they ventured deeper into the island, Thomas and his friends finally found Lady, a beautiful and elegant engine. She welcomed them warmly, and they became fast friends. Thomas, Percy, James, and Emily soon discovered that Lady's magic was not just luck, but the power of friendship itself. United by their newfound friendship, they returned to the island together, spreading Lady's magic and bringing joy to everyone they met. Their adventures continued, and Thomas realized that the true magic of Sodor was the bonds of friendship they all shared. Back at the Sodor Steamworks, the other engines listened in awe as Thomas recounted their adventures with Lady. They learned that while luck could be fleeting, the magic of friendship was everlasting. And so, in the enchanting world of Sodor, Thomas the Little Blue Train and his friends showed that the greatest adventures were the ones filled with friendship, teamwork, and the joy of discovery. Once upon a time in a magical forest hidden away from the human world, there lived a community of tiny blue creatures known as the Smurfs. They were led by the wise and kind Papa Smurf, who wore a red hat and had a long white beard. The Smurfs were a close-knit family, and each Smurf had a unique personality and skill that made them special. 
There was Brainy Smur, who loved to read and share his knowledge, Clumsy Smur, who, as his name implied, was a bit accident-prone, and Smurfette, the only female Smurf, who was known for her beauty and kind heart. Their peaceful life in the Smurf village was often interrupted by the mischievous antics of the evil wizard Gargamel, who wanted to capture the Smurfs and use them to create a powerful potion. Gargamel was often accompanied by his not-so-bright cat Azrael. Despite the constant threat from Gargamel, the Smurfs always managed to outsmart him with their teamwork, quick thinking, and the magic of their magical forest. They lived in charming mushroom-shaped houses, tended to their gardens, and had a wonderful sense of community. One sunny day, the Smurfs discovered a hidden portal deep within the forest that led to another magical world filled with enchanting creatures. They called it the Enchanted Meadow. In this new world, they met the tiny and graceful Flutterbees and the wise and ancient Oakwood Tree. As the Smurfs explored the Enchanted Meadow, they learned valuable lessons about respecting nature, appreciating differences, and the importance of friendship and unity. They shared their own wisdom with the creatures of this new world and forged bonds that would last a lifetime. With each adventure, the Smurfs discovered that even though they were small in stature, their hearts were big and their spirits were even bigger. They taught everyone they met that kindness, cooperation, and a little touch of magic could overcome any obstacle. And so, in the enchanting world of the Smurfs, every day was an adventure filled with laughter, love, and the joy of living in harmony with nature and one another. In the sunny and cheerful town of Peppa Town, there lived a lovable little pig named Peppa. Peppa Pig was known far and wide for her boundless energy and her insatiable curiosity. She lived with her family, Mummy Pig, Daddy Pig, and her little brother George. One bright morning, as the sun shone down on Peppa Town, Peppa woke up with a burst of excitement. She had a grand adventure planned for the day, and she couldn't wait to share it with her family. After gobbling down her breakfast, Peppa hurriedly gathered her family in the living room. Today we're going on a big day out, Peppa announced with glee. Mummy Pig and Daddy Pig exchanged knowing glances. They were well aware of Peppa's enthusiasm for adventure. Where are we going, Peppa? asked Mummy Pig. It's a surprise, giggled Peppa. With their bags packed and picnic lunch ready, the pig family hopped into their red car and set off. The journey was filled with songs, laughter, and Peppa's endless questions about the surprise destination. Mummy Pig and Daddy Pig shared knowing smiles as they drove. After what felt like hours to Peppa's impatient heart, they arrived at their destination, Dottyland Adventure Park. The park was a sprawling wonderland filled with colorful rides, games, and delightful characters. Peppa's eyes sparkled with excitement as she took in the sight. Wow, it's perfect, she exclaimed. The family spent the entire day riding roller coasters, playing games, and enjoying delicious ice cream. Peppa's infectious laughter echoed through the park as she tried every ride, with Daddy Pig and George following closely behind. As the sun began to set, Peppa insisted on one last adventure, a hot air balloon ride. The view from high above was breathtaking, and Peppa couldn't stop smiling. She turned to her family and said, This has been the best day ever. As they returned home, tired but happy, Peppa reflected on her big day out. It wasn't just about the rides or the ice cream. It was about the joy of spending time with her family and creating cherished memories together. Back in their cozy home, Peppa snuggled into her bed, feeling grateful for her wonderful day. She whispered to herself, Every day can be a big day out when you're with the ones you love. And so, Peppa Pig's big day out became a cherished memory for the Pig family, a reminder that the best adventures were the ones shared with family and filled with laughter, love, and endless surprises. In Peppa Town, every day was a new adventure waiting to be discovered, thanks to Peppa and her boundless curiosity. Once upon a time on the bustling island of Sodor, there lived a blue tank engine named Thomas. Thomas was a cheerful and friendly train who loved to explore and go on exciting adventures with his friends. One sunny morning, Thomas was at the Sodor Steamworks for a routine checkup. His friend Percy chugged in with exciting news. Thomas, he puffed excitedly, there's going to be a great race on the island, and engines from all over Sodor are invited to participate. Thomas was thrilled. He loved a good race, and he knew this would be an opportunity for him to show his speed and determination. I'm definitely going to enter the great race, Thomas said, with a determined look in his eyes. As the day of the great race approached, 
Thomas practiced tirelessly. He raced through the countryside, climbed steep hills, and even took on challenging obstacles to get ready. He was determined to give it his all and make his friends proud. On the day of the race, engines from all over the island gathered at the starting line. There was Emily, Gordon, Henry, James, and even Diesel, the grumpy Diesel engine, wanted to prove himself. The race had many exciting challenges, from crossing rickety bridges to delivering goods to various stations. Thomas raced alongside his friends, each engine giving their best. They encountered tunnels, hills, and even had to cross a long and wobbly suspension bridge high above a river. Throughout the race, Thomas found himself neck and neck with Percy, his best friend. They encouraged each other, knowing that no matter who won, their friendship was more important. As the race neared the finish line, the engines could see the Soder Steamworks in the distance. It was a final sprint to the finish. Thomas and Percy gave it their all, steam billowing from their funnels as they raced toward the end. In a thrilling finish, Thomas and Percy crossed the finish line at the exact same time. It was a tie. The engines and the spectators cheered, celebrating the incredible teamwork and sportsmanship of Thomas and Percy. The fat controller, Sir Topham Hatt, congratulated both engines. You've shown that friendship and teamwork are just as important as winning, he said with a smile. Thomas and Percy felt proud, knowing that their friendship was the real victory of the day. As the sun set on the island of Sodor, the engines returned to the sheds tired but happy. They knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they could always count on each other and their friendship to see them through. And so, on the island of Sodor, where the steam engines and diesel engines worked together, the spirit of friendship and teamwork always prevailed, making every day an adventure worth sharing. Chapter 1 I want to be king. Prince Charming was a handsome man, but he was horrible. I want to be king of far, far away, he thought. But he needed help to be king, so he went to see some fairy tale villains. They weren't nice people. They didn't like Prince Charming. My friends, listen to me, said Prince Charming to the fairy tale villains. What do you want? We're not your friends, they all shouted. But Prince Charming needed their help. He had an idea. Shrek and Fiona were with the queen of far, far away. The king is not well, the queen said to them. You two must do the king's work, so they did the king's work. Shrek was not good at it. Shrek had to wear the king's shirt and trousers. I don't like this, Fiona, he said. Shrek started a fire in the castle. Oh no, Shrek, said Fiona. Sorry, said Shrek Shrek, and Fiona went to see the king. I'm dying, the king said. Fiona started to cry. Shrek, can you be the new king? asked the king. Oh no, thought Shrek. Ogres aren't good kings, he said. Do you have an heir? Yes, his name's Arthur said the king, and then he died chapter two. The next heir. The queen and Fiona were very sad. Shrek talked to his friends, donkey and puss in boots. We must find Arthur, he said. He's going to be king of far, far away. So the three friends went to find Arthur. Bye, shouted Shrek from the ship. You're going to be a father, Shrek, shouted Fiona. A father, thought Shrek. Don't be frightened, said donkey to Shrek. I love my children, and I'm a good father. You going to be a great father too, Shrek. But Shrek was frightened. Me? A father? No way, he thought. At the same time, in Far, Far Away, Prince Charming talked to the villains. No one understands us, he said. The good fairy tale characters have the best of everything. Is that okay? No, they all shouted. Then come with me, said Prince Charming. We're going to Far, Far Away. Yes! they all shouted. In far, far away, the villains broke things and people were very frightened. Let's go to the castle, shouted Prince Charming. At the castle, Princess Fiona was with her friends, the princesses, dragon, and the fairy tale characters. Suddenly, the friends stopped talking. Bank! Prince Charming and the fairy tale villains were inside the castle. Bank! You go, said the fairy tale characters to Fiona. We're going to stop them. Quick, said Princess Fiona to the princesses. Let's go! Prince Charming and the fairy tale villains ran in. I am the new king of far, far away, shouted Prince Charming. Where are Shrek and Fiona? No one said anything. Where are they? shouted Prince Charming to Pinocchio. Pinocchio was very frightened. Shrek went to find the heir to far, far away, he said. The next heir, said Prince Charming. We must find him. Chapter 3 It's Magic Shrek, Donkey, and Puss in Boots were at sea. 
they saw a school. Stop the ship, shouted Shrek. They got off the ship and walked into the school. I think that Arthur is a schoolboy, said Shrek. They found Arthur. Arthur, you are the king's heir, said Shrek. Come to far, far away. Me, a king, said Arthur. Wow, they jumped on the ship with Arthur. Bang! Arthur crashed the ship. The ship had water in it. They went on to the land. They saw an old man. He was Merlin the magician. Please help us, said Arthur. Please do your magic. We must go to far, far away. I don't know. I don't do much magic now, slash, said Merlin. Arthur started crying. Please, he said. Suddenly there was a bang and a crash. Shrek, Donkey, Puss in Boots, and Arthur were in far, far away. Wow, they said Fiona, the queen, and the princesses were outside the castle. What's Prince Charming doing? We must find out, said Fiona. I know, quick, let's go into the castle, said Rapunzel. They went after her, and there was Prince Charming. Rapunzel ran into his arms. This is the new queen of far, far away, said Prince Charming. Shrek is coming back, shouted Fiona. Good, said Prince Charming, but first you're all going to prison. Now and far, far away there were villains everywhere. This is horrible, said Shrek. They found Pinocchio. Where's Fiona? asked Shrek. She's in prison. Help her, said Pinocchio. There's going to be a show and Prince Charming is going to hurt you. Oh no, said Shrek. Chapter 4 The horrible show. Prince Charming thought about the show. He was very happy. No more, Shrek, he said with a horrible laugh. Shrek, Donkey, Puss in Boots, and Arthur found Prince Charming inside the castle. Where's Fiona? shouted Shrek. Oh good, Shrek, you're here, and here's the new king, Arthur, ha ha. Prince Charming laughed. His face was close to Arthur's. I'm going to be king. No, stop, Shrek shouted. He's not the heir, I am, okay? Arthur looked at him. But you said, I didn't want to be king, I had to find someone, and I found you. Shrek said. Okay then, said Prince Charming. Arthur, you can go. So Arthur went. He was very sad. Shrek never liked me, he thought. The fairy tale villains put Donkey and Puss in Boots in prison with Fiona and the princesses. Donkey, Puss, where's Shrek? asked Fiona. Prince Charming is going to kill him in his show, Donkey said sadly. The queen was very angry. She was very strong when she was angry. I can break the prison, she said, and she did it. Wow, said Donkey. Let's help Shrek, said Fiona. Everyone ran out of the prison. Prince Charming and the villains started the show. Shrek was very sad. Fiona, the princesses, Donkey, Puss in Boots, and the fairy tale characters ran to the castle. Suddenly, Donkey saw Arthur. Don't go, shouted Donkey. Prince Charming wanted to hurt you. Shrek helped you. I'm coming with you, Arthur said. At the show, things were bad for Shrek. His friends wanted to help, but it wasn't easy. Suddenly, Arthur shouted, Stop the show. You don't have to be villains. Look at Prince Charming. He's horrible and he's never happy. Do you want to be like him? No, said the villains. Wait, don't listen to him. I'm the king, shouted Prince Charming. No, said the villains. Arthur is our king. Arthur! Arthur! Everyone shouted. They were very happy with the new king. Shrek and Fiona were happy again, too. Arthur is going to be a great king, said Shrek. And you're going to be a great father, said Fiona. The end. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, then please subscribe, like, and share this video with others. Thanks for supporting. Once upon a time, on the sunny and picturesque island of Sodor, there lived a cheerful and hardworking blue tank engine named Thomas. Thomas was well known and beloved by all the engines and the people of Sodor. He was always eager to help, whether it was pulling coaches, delivering goods, or assisting with any task that came his way. One bright morning at the bustling Knapford station, Sir Topham Hatt, the fat controller, had a special assignment for Thomas. He stood on the platform, wearing his top hat and looking as important as ever. Thomas, he said, I have a very important job for you today. I need you to collect a special delivery from Brendam Docks and take it to Misty Valley. Misty Valley was a remote part of the island, known for its lush greenery and the mysterious mist that often enveloped the area. It was a place where very few engines ventured, and tales of its enchanting beauty and occasional eerie happenings intrigued Thomas. Of course, sir, Thomas replied with his signature enthusiasm. 
I'll make sure the delivery reaches Misty Valley on time. Thomas puffed away from Canapford, his boiler bubbling with excitement. He loved going to new places and having new adventures. As he chugged along the tracks, the lush green landscape of Sodor passed by in a blur. He could hear the birds chirping, and the sun warmed his blue paint. At Brendam Docks, Thomas was greeted by Salty the Dockside Diesel. Ahoy there, me hearty! You be the one collectin' the special delivery for Misty Valley, be ye? Salty inquired in his salty accent. I Salty. I'm here for the special delivery, Thomas replied. The special delivery was a large crate, carefully loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. It was marked with a mysterious emblem that Thomas had never seen before, a swirling mist enveloping a hidden treasure. With the precious cargo securely fastened, Thomas puffed away from the docks heading toward Misty Valley. As he approached, the landscape changed from the familiar countryside to a dense forest, and a thick mist began to roll in, obscuring his view. This must be Misty Valley, Thomas thought to himself as he entered the mist. The mist was thick, making it difficult for Thomas to see more than a few meters ahead. His wheels clicked on the rails, and he relied on the reassuring rhythm of his own movements to guide him through the haze. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the mist, sending a shiver down Thomas's boiler. "'Who goes there?' the voice demanded. Thomas stopped in his tracks, his steam hissing with surprise. He couldn't see anyone, but he could sense that he was not alone. "'It's me, Thomas,' he replied. "'I've come to deliver a special package to Misty Valley.' The mist swirled, revealing a figure standing in front of him. It was an engine, unlike any Thomas had ever seen. The engine was painted in shimmering silver and had a mysterious, almost ethereal appearance. I am Lady of Misty Valley, the engine said, her voice soft and melodious. I guard the secrets of this enchanted place. What brings you here, Thomas? Thomas explained his mission how he was delivering the special package for Sir Topham Hatt. Lady nodded, her silver wheels gleaming in the mist. Very well, Thomas, you may proceed. But be warned, Misty Valley is a place of wonders and mysteries. It's easy to get lost here. Follow the sound of the stream, and it will lead you to your destination. With that, Lady of Misty Valley disappeared into the swirling mist. Thomas hesitated for a moment, feeling a mix of excitement and curiosity, he knew he had a job to do, and he couldn't let the mist or the mysteries of Misty Valley deter him. Following Lady's advice, Thomas listened for the sound of running water. Soon, he heard the gentle babbling of a stream, and he followed the sound, his wheels click-clacking on the rails. As Thomas approached the source of the sound, the mist began to clear, revealing a breathtaking sight. Misty Valley was indeed a place of wonder. It was filled with vibrant flowers, towering trees, and a crystal-clear stream that meandered through the valley. Sunlight filtered through the leaves, creating a magical, dappled effect. But there was something else that caught Thomas's eye. High on a hill, he spotted an ancient-looking stone structure covered in ivy and moss. It had an air of mystery about it, and Thomas couldn't resist the urge to investigate. Leaving the crate on a siding near the stream, Thomas made his way up the hill to the stone structure. As he approached, he realized it was an old, abandoned mine entrance. Curiosity piqued, Thomas ventured inside. The tunnel was dark and damp, but he pressed on, his headlamp illuminating the way. Deeper and deeper into the mine, he went until he reached a chamber filled with glistening gemstones. These must be the treasures of Misty Valley, Thomas thought in awe as he examined the beautiful gems. Each one sparkled with a different color, casting a mesmerizing glow in the dim light. But then, he noticed something peculiar. There, among the gems, was a small, ancient-looking book. It was weathered and worn, with pages that seemed to whisper secrets of ages past. Thomas carefully picked it up, intrigued by the possibility of uncovering Misty Valley's mysteries. As he opened the book, he was greeted by beautiful illustrations and handwritten text, it told the story of Misty Valley, of Lady's role as its guardian, and of the treasures hidden within the mine. It also mentioned a legend, a legend of a hidden chamber deep within the mine, said to hold the most precious and powerful gem of all. Determined to uncover the truth, Thomas decided to explore further into the mine. The passages became narrower and more treacherous, 
but he pressed on, guided by the words in the ancient book. After what felt like hours, Thomas reached a chamber unlike any he had seen before. It was illuminated by a brilliant, pulsating light emanating from a massive, glowing gemstone at its center. The gem was unlike any other he had encountered, radiating a warm, ethereal glow. As Thomas approached the gem, he felt a surge of energy and warmth. It was as if the gem itself was alive, pulsing with power. He carefully examined the gem, its facets revealing a kaleidoscope of colors. Just then, a voice echoed through the chamber, startling Thomas. "'Welcome, Thomas,' the voice said. It was Lady, her shimmering form appearing beside the gem. "'You have found the Heartstone, the most powerful gem in all of Misty Valley.' Thomas was taken aback but managed to stammer. "'What is the Heartstone, Lady?' "'The Heartstone is the source of Misty Valley's magic,' Lady explained. "'It represents the purest form of friendship and kindness, the very essence of the island.' It is said that whoever possesses the Heartstone has the power to bring harmony and happiness to all. Thomas realized the significance of what he had found. The Heartstone held the key to the island's magic, and it was his responsibility to protect it. I must take the Heartstone back to Knapford, Thomas said, a sense of duty washing over him. It belongs to all the people and engines of Sodor. Lady nodded in agreement. You have a noble heart, Thomas, but remember... The Heartstone's magic can only be harnessed by one who truly understands the power of friendship. With great care, Thomas secured the Heartstone in his crate and began the journey back to Knapford. The mist had lifted, and Misty Valley seemed to shine with newfound radiance. As he made his way through the valley, Thomas couldn't help but reflect on his own experiences of friendship. He thought of his friends on Sodor his fellow engines, and all the people who relied on the railways to connect them. The journey back to Knapford was filled with excitement and wonder. The mist had cleared, revealing the lush beauty of the valley once more. As he approached Knapford, he could see the familiar faces of his friends and fellow engines waiting for him. When Thomas arrived at Knapford Station, Sir Topham Hatt was there to greet him, wearing a smile of anticipation. "'Well done, Thomas,' he exclaimed. "'You've returned with the Heartstone,' This is a momentous day for Sodor. With great ceremony, the Heartstone was placed on display for all to see. Its radiant glow filled the station with a warm, comforting light. As the people and engines of Sodor gathered around, Thomas realized that the true magic of Misty Valley wasn't just in the gemstone, but in the friendships that bound them all together. From that day forward, Misty Valley became a place of wonder and joy, a destination for those seeking the magic of friendship. And Thomas the Tank Engine, with his kind heart and unwavering dedication, continued to be the beloved symbol of that magic. As the sun set over Sodor, casting a golden glow across the island, Thomas couldn't help but smile. He had embarked on a journey of mystery and discovery, and in the process he had found the most powerful treasure of all, the magic of friendship. And so, on the island of Sodor, where engines and people lived in harmony, the legend of Thomas the Tank Engine and the Heartstone of Misty Valley became a cherished story, a reminder that true friendship could light up even the darkest of tunnels and bring joy to all who believed in its magic. Once upon a time in the colorful underwater world of the ocean, there lived a playful family of sharks. Mommy Shark, Daddy Shark, and their three adorable baby sharks, Baby Shark, Pinky Shark, and Bluey Shark. The ocean was their playground, and they loved to swim, explore, and have fun together. Baby Shark, with a big smile on his face and a twinkle in his eye, was the most curious of them all. He was always asking questions and wanting to learn new things. One sunny morning, as they were swimming near the coral reefs, Baby Shark couldn't contain his excitement. Mommy, Daddy, can we go on an adventure today? I want to explore the mysterious shipwreck cove, he exclaimed. Mommy Shark and Daddy Shark exchanged knowing glances and smiled. They knew that Shipwreck Cove was a place filled with tales of hidden treasures, but they also knew it could be a bit dangerous. Daddy Shark spoke, Baby Shark, Shipwreck Cove can be a tricky place, but if you promise to be careful and listen to us, we can go on this adventure together. Baby Shark nodded eagerly. I promise, Mommy and Daddy, I'll be very careful. With their hearts filled with love and a sense of adventure, 
the shark family set off towards Shipwreck Cove. As they swam deeper into the ocean, the water became darker, and the coral reefs gave way to the eerie silence of the deep sea. As they approached the cove, they saw the outlines of the ancient shipwrecks resting on the ocean floor. It was a hauntingly beautiful sight, with colorful fish darting in and out of the sunken ships. Look at all the shipwrecks, Baby Shark! Pinky Shark exclaimed, her eyes wide with wonder. But Baby Shark's attention was fixed on a mysterious old treasure chest half buried in the sand. He couldn't resist swimming closer to investigate. Wait, Baby Shark? Daddy Shark cautioned. We don't know what might be inside. It could be dangerous. But Baby Shark's curiosity got the better of him. He gently pushed the sand away from the chest and, with a sense of anticipation, opened it. Inside, they found not gold or jewels, but something even more remarkable, a collection of ancient books. These must be the journals of the sailors who once sailed these seas, Mommy Shark mused. Baby Shark pulled out one of the old books and carefully opened it. It was filled with stories and drawings of the ocean's wonders, tales of friendship between creatures of the deep, and lessons about kindness and understanding. As Baby Shark leafed through the pages, he realized that while treasures could be beautiful and valuable, knowledge, friendship, and the love of family were the greatest treasures of all. With newfound wisdom and a heart filled with gratitude, Baby Shark closed the ancient book and swam back to his family. Thank you, Mommy and Daddy, for bringing me on this adventure, Baby Shark said, his smile even brighter than before. I've learned that the real treasure is right here with you and the stories we create together. The Shark family swam back to their home in the coral reefs, their hearts united by the love they shared and the memories of their extraordinary adventure. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, they knew that every day in the ocean was a new opportunity for discovery, friendship, and joy. And so, in the heart of the ocean, the Shark family continued their adventures, cherishing each moment together and sharing their love with the vibrant underwater world they called home. And they swam happily ever after, their laughter echoing through the deep blue sea. Once upon a time in the enchanting land of Sodor, where talking trains and magical adventures were a part of everyday life, there lived a cheerful blue steam engine named Thomas. Thomas was known far and wide for his adventurous spirit and his insatiable curiosity. He loved nothing more than to explore the island and discover new places. One sunny morning, while chugging along the tracks, Thomas noticed a peculiar glimmering light deep within the forest. It was a soft golden glow that beckoned him, promising a mystery to unravel. Without a second thought, Thomas decided to follow the light, leaving his usual route behind. As he ventured further into the heart of the forest, the golden light grew brighter and more enchanting. It led him to a hidden grove where he discovered a magical talking butterfly named Bella. Bella had shimmering wings that sparkled like the stars, and her voice was as melodious as a songbird's. Bella told Thomas about a magical tree that was said to grant wishes to anyone who found it. The tree was located deep within the forest, and its location was known only to those with pure hearts. Bella believed that Thomas was one of those pure-hearted individuals and offered to guide him to the tree. Excited by the prospect of making a wish, Thomas agreed to follow Bella's lead. They journeyed through lush greenery, crossed babbling brooks, and climbed steep hills. Along the way, they encountered friendly woodland creatures who joined them on their quest. As they reached the heart of the forest, they found the fabled magic oak. Its branches stretched high into the sky and its leaves shimmered in a rainbow of colors. Bella explained that to make a wish, one had to speak their heart's deepest desire to the tree. Thomas, after much contemplation, made his wish. He wished for all the engines on the island of Sodor to be safe and happy, and for endless adventures that would bring joy to everyone. With a gentle rustling of leaves, the magic oak granted his wish, and a wave of warmth and happiness washed over Thomas. Having fulfilled his wish, Thomas and Bella returned to their beloved island of Sodor. Thomas shared the magic of the magic oak with his friends, and they all made their wishes, spreading happiness throughout the land. From that day on, Thomas continued to have amazing adventures on the island of Sodor, but he knew that the greatest adventure of all was the one that led him to the magic oak and the wish that brought happiness to his friends. And so, Thomas the Train remained the most beloved and adventurous engine on the island. 
reminding everyone that the true magic of wishes lies in sharing them with others. Once upon a time, in the bustling town of Adventure Bay, there were six courageous puppies and a tech-savvy boy who formed a heroic team known as the Paw Patrol. Ryder, the young leader, and his pup pals, Chase, Marshall, Skye, Rubble, Rocky, and Zuma, were always ready for any rescue mission that came their way. One sunny morning, the Adventure Bay community gathered for the grand opening of a new amusement park. The park, named Adventureland, was a place of fun and excitement. Everyone was thrilled, except for Mayor Humdinger and his mischievous kittens, who had been planning their own, not-so-fun event. As the park's first ride, the Thrillo Coaster, rocketed into action, something went terribly wrong. Mayor Humdinger's kittens had tampered with the controls, and the coaster was stuck at the highest point, with people screaming for help. In a flash, Ryder received an emergency call on his pup pad. Without wasting a second, he summoned the Paw Patrol to the lookout. The team quickly gathered, and Chase, Marshall, Sky, Rubble, Rocky, and Zuma raced to the rescue vehicles. With teamwork and determination, the Paw Patrol reached Adventureland. Chase's police skills helped keep the crowd safe, while Marshall's firefighting expertise was put to use calming frightened riders. Sky and her helicopter were invaluable in assessing the situation from above, and Rubble's construction skills came in handy to devise a rescue plan. As the pups worked together, they managed to safely lower the roller coaster back to the ground, earning cheers and gratitude from the relieved visitors. Mayor Humdinger, who had been scheming to take over Adventure Bay, saw how the Paw Patrol's teamwork and heroism had saved the day. He realized that his kitten's mischievous ways were no match for the incredible bond of friendship shared by the pups. In the end, Adventure Bay celebrated not only the opening of Adventureland, but also the heroic efforts of the Paw Patrol. Ryder and his faithful team proved once again that no challenge was too big, and no job was too small when they worked together. As the sun set on Adventure Bay, the Paw Patrol returned to their lookout, knowing that they were always ready to protect their community and make it a safe and fun place for all. And so, the story of Adventure Bay continued, with the Paw Patrol always on the lookout, ensuring that their town remained a place of excitement, friendship. In the Hundred Acre Wood, a place where enchantment thrived, there lived a silly old bear named Winnie the Pooh. He was a rotund, honey-loving bear with a heart full of curiosity. Every day, Pooh embarked on adventures with his friends, and every adventure was an opportunity for Pooh to satisfy his sweet tooth. One sunny morning, Pooh woke up with an insatiable craving for honey. His tummy rumbled, and he knew he had to find some honey, no matter what it took. So, he embarked on a honey hunt, ready for whatever obstacles lay ahead. As Pooh wandered through the hundred-acre wood, he came across his dear friend Piglet, a timid and small piglet with a heart as big as the sky. Piglet noticed Pooh's grumbling tummy and asked, Pooh, are you hungry? Oh, piglet, Pooh replied, I'm not just hungry, I'm rumbly in my tumbly for honey. Piglet, always eager to help his friend, said, I'll help you find some honey, Pooh. And so, the two friends ventured deeper into the wood. Their journey led them to a great oak tree, where they encountered Owl, the wise old owl of the forest. Pooh asked Owl if he knew where to find honey. Owl, with a knowing look, said, Honey can be found in the land of heffalumps and woozles. Pooh and Piglet, undeterred by the mention of heffalumps and woozles, decided to follow Owl's advice. They crossed rivers, climbed hills, and trudged through thickets until they reached the mysterious land. But what they found was not what they expected. Heffalumps and woozles, strange and fantastical creatures, danced around trees, playing tricks and causing mischief. Pooh and Piglet were bewildered but determined to find honey. They stumbled upon a beehive and, with sheer bravery, tried to take some honey. The bees, however, were not pleased with the intruders. They swarmed around Pooh and Piglet, chasing them through the woods. In their haste to escape, Pooh and Piglet tripped and fell into a deep pit. As they sat in the pit, Pooh sighed and said, I suppose we won't be having honey today, Piglet. Piglet, his eyes filled with determination, replied, We may not have honey now, Pooh, but we have something even sweeter. Friendship. Just then, their friends from the Hundred Acre Wood, including Tigger, Eeyore, Rabbit, and Kanga, 
arrived to rescue them. Together, they used a long branch to help Pooh and Piglet out of the pit. Back in the safety of the Hundred Acre Wood, Pooh realized that the sweetest thing in the world was not honey, but the love and friendship of his dear friends. With smiles on their faces and hearts full of joy, they returned to Pooh's cozy home for a picnic filled with laughter and stories. And so, in the Hundred Acre Wood, the adventures of Winnie the Pooh and his friends continued, reminding everyone that the sweetest treasures in life were not always found in a honey pot, but in the bonds of friendship and the warmth of togetherness. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a little bunny named Benny. Benny was no ordinary bunny. He had a magical gift. When he closed his eyes and made a wish, it always came true. But Benny was very careful with his wishes because he knew that wishes were precious, and you should use them wisely. One bright and starry night, as Benny hopped through the moonlit meadow, he heard a faint crying sound. Curious, he followed the sound and discovered a lost baby bird perched on a branch, unable to fly down. The baby bird was scared and shivering. Benny hopped closer and asked, Are you okay? The baby bird replied with a soft chirp, I'm lost, and I don't know how to get home. Can you help me? Benny nodded and said, Don't worry, little friend. I'll help you get back to your nest. Benny closed his eyes and made his first wish. He wished for strong, fluffy clouds to form beneath the tree. And just like magic, soft clouds appeared below the branch, making a safe landing for the baby bird. The baby bird hopped onto the clouds, and Benny gently guided them down to the ground. The little bird chirped happily, Thank you, Benny. You're my hero. Benny smiled and replied, You're welcome, little friend. Now let's find your nest. With Benny's keen sense of smell and the baby bird's directions, they soon found the nest nestled high in a tall tree. The baby bird's family was overjoyed to see their little one safe and sound. As Benny hopped away from the tree, he realized something. He had used one of his wishes to help a friend in need, and it felt wonderful. He knew that helping others was one of the best things you could do. Benny continued his adventures, always ready to lend a helping paw to those in trouble. He used his magical wishes to bring smiles to the faces of many animals in the forest. And every night, as Benny closed his eyes, he made one special wish, a wish for happiness and kindness to fill the hearts of all the creatures in the forest, and for them to know the joy of helping one another. From that day on, Benny the Bunny's forest was a place of kinness and friendship, where everyone looked out for one another. And Benny knew that he didn't need a hundred wishes to make the world a better place, one act of kindness at a time could do the trick. And so, as the stars twinkled in the night sky, Benny hopped to sleep, knowing that in his own small way, he had made the world a better and happier place for all. Once upon a time in the bustling town of Radiator Springs, there lived a race car named Lightning McQueen. Lightning was the fastest car on four wheels, and he loved nothing more than racing around the track at top speed. One sunny morning, Lightning heard about a big race happening in the nearby town of Grand Prixville. It was the most prestigious race of the year, and Lightning was determined to win. He revved his engine and sped off to Grand Prixville with his trusty tow truck friend Mater in tow. As Lightning arrived in Grand Prixville, he was greeted by a crowd of cheering fans. The other race cars, including his rival Chick Hicks, were ready at the starting line. Lightning felt a rush of excitement as the race was about to begin. The race was intense, with cars zooming around hairpin turns and racing down straightaways. Lightning was in the lead, but Chick Hicks was close behind, trying to overtake him. It was a neck-and-neck -neck race, and the finish line was in sight. In the final stretch, Lightning and Chick Hicks were side by side. It was going to be a photo finish. With a burst of speed and determination, Lightning surged ahead, crossing the finish line just inches ahead of Chick Hicks. The crowd erupted in cheers as Lightning McQueen won the big race. He had proven once again that he was the fastest car in the world. But Lightning didn't just win for himself. He won for all his friends back in Radiator Springs. As Lightning celebrated his victory, he realized that winning was important, but so were his friends and the journey itself. He knew that no matter how fast he raced, his true happiness came from the friendships he had made along the way. And so, Lightning McQueen returned to Radiator Springs with a shiny trophy and a heart full of gratitude. He knew that in the world of racing and in life, the greatest victories were the ones shared with the ones you loved. In the bustling and cheerful land of Sodor, 
there was a little blue engine named Thomas. Thomas was known for his cheerful smile and his bright blue paint. He worked hard every day, pulling freight cars and passengers to their destinations. One sunny morning, Sir Topham Hatt, the controller of the railway, called Thomas to the train yard. Thomas, he said, we have a special job for you today. You will be delivering a load of important freight cars to the docks. Thomas was thrilled to be given such an important task. He puffed his pistons proudly and chugged to the yard, where a long line of freight cars was waiting to be coupled to him. The journey to the docks was long but beautiful. The tracks wound through lush green forests past sparkling rivers and alongside meadows filled with colorful flowers. Thomas loved the sights and sounds of Sodor, and he whistled happily as he chugged along. As Thomas approached the docks, he noticed that the number of freight cars behind him had decreased. He was supposed to have 12 cars, but now he only had 10. Thomas was puzzled and worried. Where had the missing freight cars gone? He stopped at the docks and explained the situation to the dock manager. The dock manager was concerned too. We need those freight cars for an important shipment, he said. We must find them. Thomas decided to retrace his steps and look for the missing cars. He puffed back along the tracks, searching high and low. He asked the other engines if they had seen the missing freight cars, but no one had. Just when Thomas was starting to lose hope, he heard a faint whistle in the distance. It was Percy, another friendly engine. Percy had found the missing freight cars. They had become uncoupled from Thomas when he had gone up a steep hill. Thomas was relieved and grateful to Percy. He thanked his friend and quickly went back to collect the missing cars. With all 12 freight cars safely coupled to him, Thomas returned to the docks. The dock manager was delighted to see the freight cars arrive. Well done, Thomas, he said. You've saved the day. Thomas beamed with pride. He had learned that even when things went wrong, he could count on his friends and himself to make things right. And so, in the vibrant land of Sodor, Thomas the Little Blue Engine continued to work hard and have exciting adventures, knowing that every day brought new challenges and new opportunities to be a really useful engine.